Hello, good afternoon everybody. I am being joined now by legendary fertility guru, Zeta West. We are talking about ways to improve sperm and egg quality, health, whether you're having IVF, whether you're trying to conceive naturally, she is going to be sharing her wisdom with us today and her expertise. Um, she has written the most fantastic article for us, all about ways to optimise egg and sperm health. And Zeta West is kindly giving away a bundle of her egg supplements to help with egg quality. So if you head to our website, fertilityhelphub.com, you'll be able to enter and I'm going to invite Zita in now. I love going live with her. It's always very interesting to learn more. So welcome to everyone who's joining. This will be a great session. Just let me get her in. Hi to those who are joining. Welcome, good afternoon. I'm being joined by Zita West any second now. Yes, we're recording this as well. So she will be Aww. here. Hello, Zita. How are you? I'm fine. I was getting a bit panicked there. <laughs> I couldn't see you. No, I know. I came on. I came off, but we're connected now, so that's all good. How are you? Fantastic. I'm fine. How are you doing? You're looking resplendent in your orange. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, we um, have had a lot of interest in this fantastic okay. article, which you have recently written for Fertility Help Hub, which is linked to in our bio right now, mm -hmm. which is all around how to optimize and improve egg and sperm quality whether you're trying to conceive naturally or with fertility treatment so that's our topic for today isn't it yeah yes, um, it is. so um I'm, I'm sure everyone watching knows who you are already but for those who don't please could you introduce yourself and then we'll start talking oh i can see people there. oh debbie i can see somebody i know um i'm zeta west i'm a midwife of 40 years i'm an acupuncturist um i have a clinic in london that deals with very much a holistic approach to fertility and IVF. Amazing. And it's been a while since we've done one of these chats, so I'm very, very excited to be speaking to you today. I know. I mean, I, I, you know, I haven't done one for quite a while, so I did a webinar a couple of weeks ago, but this is great. But it's quite interesting. You know, when I set up 20 years ago, a lot of what I was doing was considered really off the wall you know yeah. i used to get asked by a lot of doctors there's no evidence to support anything you're doing and i think things are actually changing now mm -hmm. because there is in fact a lot of evidence to support what you're doing and the frustration for me especially when i began the ivf clinic was that um people be coming to me for acupuncture and seeing the therapist for nutrition hypnotherapy etc and then they'd go to their IVF doctors and they'd say there's no evidence to support the use of nutrition and it that drives me mad because I really think there's a lot you can do to improve your eggs and your sperm mm -hmm. even though I know a woman is born with all the eggs that she ever 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 is going to possess but the fact that the environment in which those eggs are growing can be affected by your diet and your lifestyle. 100%. And I know that you have obviously supported a lot of women and men for many mm -hmm. years through yeah. of those, you know, holistic areas. Um, and and we'll, we'll focus a bit on, you know, nutritional health today and other things that people can be doing to improve sperm and eggs. Um, we get a lot of people asking us um, about your supplements. So I'd like to ask you a bit about those today as well. And for those who um, are using them or are interested in using them, Sita is kindly doing two things. Number one, um, she's offering our readers 10% off the range, which is amazing. I use them myself uh, with code FHH10. So the article, which you must read, is linked up in our bio and you can go through that or through their website or Zeta's website. Um, and also, which we'll come on to in a minute, um, you're very kindly giving one of our readers uh, the opportunity to win um, a bundle of your, um, a bundle of supplements to support egg quality, uh, which I'd love to talk a bit more about. So please do follow our link in bio, head to our website to find out more. So first of all, in terms of preparation, how yeah. can women, first of all, prepare best for conception? I think mindset is so, so, so important. And, you know, as you, as you know, I mean, we all go through ups and downs in life. And when you're going through a down or you're going through uncertainty, 
it's hard to feel motivated, mm -hmm. it's hard to eat well, it's hard to exercise. You can't be bothered to do anything because you're in a you know lo low mood. So I think mindset is is the first thing, and it's really important. And the other thing is that for me, and I, it's my mantra that fertility is a whole body event. So all of your body systems are linked, and it's so easy when you're trying for a baby to read and read and read and Dr. Google and Dr. Google and Dr. Google. And my friend said that I should take this and another friend I should take that. But we're all absolutely unique. And what we do know if you're, especially if you're going through IVF, it's not just about producing one egg, it's producing a good amount of eggs. And everything we do in our life, including fertility, is about energy. And you've got to have the energy to be able to um, uh, create an egg, um, uh, an egg for, to divide, to ovulate an egg, or when you're going through IVF to produce a lot of eggs. So mm. I think one of the questions I think that's important to answer is, why do you need supplements? You know, if you're having a balanced diet, what's the point of supplements? And th this is a whole myth. There's no such thing now as a balanced diet because, you know, women don't always eat well and they um, beat themselves up if they have a chocolate cake or a glass of wine or whatever. And so, you know, what we do know is that balanced diets don't exist. They are a myth. Women are ruled by their moods, their foods and their hormones. And so, you know, depending on where they are in the time of the cycle, closer to when their period comes, the sodic factor kicks in. They get, you know, frustrated and upset that they're not pregnant or their IVF hasn't worked. So, you know, you do, I, I would never replace any supplements with diet. But what I think supplements do is they just help you build up your nutritional reserves. And so, you know, what you have to think about as well is not just one supplement or one food that's gonna, go, going to help you. You've got to sort of like, think overall of what's going on in your life so you know what we do know is that you can deplete the body of vital nutrients that are needed for fertility through being stressed through not sleeping through having a poor diet through being anxious and worried uh, or on medication so it depletes the body of nutrients that it's good to build up those stores as you go along mm. would you say that's the case obviously for natural conception and assisted reproduction but especially so for repro uh, for IVF because yeah. it's such a big task for your body oh, to yeah. produce all those eggs in one yeah. go not something yeah. you naturally do in a cycle yeah yeah so I yeah it, it is and you require energy to do that so what I always try to encourage women as well not just about taking supplements it's about education it's about being informed and so you know if you're watching this think about what's going on in your life and which areas you can improve on because it's all linked to your fertility at the end of the day so you know when you look at your mindset the one thing that women that have been going through this and it not working or their ivf i hate the word failing is that they're you know they're, they're using a lot of energy a lot of energy worrying they're also um go into sort of protection mode so they get fear is absolutely huge and when you're in that mode you don't grow on any level which is fine if you knew you're going to be pregnant in three months but four IVS down the road and two years later you, you you stop growing your life is on hold and you know you become more and more down and depressed so look at the different areas you know is it your sleep that's the weakness with you how what can you do to build up your sleep what can you do to help with your anxiety or your emotional well-being? How can you change your diet to get more energy? What can you do about your work-life um, situation to give you to give you more energy? Mm. You know, are you having enough sex? It's no good. If you're tired, if you're depleted, and you've been trying for a year, the last thing you want to do is have sex. You know, so it's it's all it's you know all of the body systems are interconnected. You mm. can't separate one from another. And I think you. You've raised a really good point, and I know so many people listening and watching this back will agree with this. But if you have been, no matter how long you've been sort of trying to conceive, if you like, wherever you are in your journey, when, when it takes longer than anticipated, whether that's months, years, it's a long time to have your life sort of on hold where you're maybe, uh, you know, being careful with your diet all the time or not drinking or 
having more sex than you really want to or whatever it might be um so to keep up that um rhythm just it is is quite difficult mentally isn't it it can be quite oh, exhausting God. absolutely it is and that's why it's really important to do whatever you can to deal with the uncertainty through through managing your mindset and there's so much information out there now there's so many apps there's lots of things you can do and i find with women they're brilliant with their finances their home life mm -hmm. all of that but when it comes to spending time and space on your own not very good you know it's like that 20 minutes of doing nothing that 20 minutes of just lying on the bed breathing listening to a nap is really important for me. And mm -hmm. that's why I've done a lot of visualizations because I'm a huge believer that, that the link between the, the heart, the gut and the, um, the uterus. Mm, absolutely. Um, I love your holistic approach. And um, when I was looking for supplements, that's one of the reasons I wanted to look for a supplement where, you know, it has the premium qualities where you've got all of the, those things that you just mentioned that you may be missing from your diet. Yeah. In not to replace having a healthy diet, but yeah. just know that you're doing everything that you can as well as exercise, as well as getting as much sleep as you can, as well as eating things moderately, but still enjoying life. So yes. Yes. everything in moderation, but um, you know, seeing a nutritionist um, yeah. as well yeah. really helped. Um, and, and I started taking supplements as far before I, uh, IVF starting as I could, um, even whilst we were trying to conceive um, naturally, which was not a success, obviously. Um, so when you speak to women and men, do you mm -hmm. advise taking supplements at least three months prior to starting treatment if that's the route that they're going down? Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, definitely. I think that, you know, in the lead up to IVF, if you can be taking them at least three months before, and it's the same, you know, when you, when you first start trying, you don't know when you're going to get pregnant. Yeah. So I think preconceptionally it's important. And I think there are key supplements that you need to take, but everybody is different and they've all, you know, got different underlying factors going on. So it's not unusual to see women, for me to see women that have got irritable bowel syndrome, diarrhea, constipation, blood sugar issues, diabetes, polycystic ovaries, endometriosis, you know, lots and lots of different factors going on. So you have to look at what those underlying factors are, especially age, at, you know, when you're older, there are more things that you require, and then take the supplements um, accordingly. Mm -hmm. So one of the things um, that we look at is what does an egg need? What does a sperm mm -hmm. need? And so the egg, which is 550 times bigger than the sperm, um, it needs certain key nutrients. So, you know, looking at the cell membrane, which is the outside of the egg, things like omega-3, which is a fat, which you can get from fish, but you need a lot of fish oil to get this in. Mm -hmm. um, and what that does is it strengthens and it makes that cell membrane more flexible to allow nutrients in and out. So if you're depleted on that, it's all a bit hard and it's harder to get the nutrients. So, you know, omega-3 is important. When you look at the mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of the um, egg, um, it contains all the mitochondria. There's so much information now on mitochondrial health. Yeah. So it requires energy. And, you know, if you're trying naturally, an egg has to grow. You have to be able to absorb those nutrients. So your gut needs to be good. You, it has to grow. It has to divide. It has to fertilize. And it has to make an embryo. So there's a lot of energy that goes into that. So things like ubiquinol, coenzyme Q10, mm -hmm. Um, increasingly there's more research on that to show and then you've got the um, nucleus of the egg cell and the sperm cell um, and again you know b vitamins folate not folic acid mm -hmm. are crucial there and then you know you think about what nourishes the eggs when you're going through something like ivf um, and the follicular fluid is increasingly important so myoinositol vitamin d all of these things can really i think help not just grow an egg but it's a healthy mature egg that you want and also especially for those in the uk we are often vitamin d uh, we don't have enough vitamin d yeah. do we so um like you said it's not as though everyone has the perfect diet where they're going to get all of those vitamins naturally yeah. um so in terms of the bundle which you're kindly giving away at the moment so head to our website fertilityhelphub.com to enter um 
this bundle is specifically formulated for egg quality. Yeah. What is it in that that helps with that? Is it all of these uh, ingredients that you just mentioned? Yeah, all of the ingredients I just mentioned, but increasingly we just brought out a new range, which I'm really excited about. It's called Fem Sieve and Men Sieve. Yes. And many women that will be watching this will be familiar that IVF clinics now are looking at something called the vaginal microbiome. So you read a lot about the gut microbiome, um, but different parts of the body have different um, species of friendly bacteria and you need to feed these bacteria so um femsieve has got lactobacillus which is really really important for the flora of the vagina and it has been linked to helping with um, implantation wow. so women that get utis that have um candida things like that it's it's worth taking and many clinics now will do a swab to see what the uh, bacteria is in the vagina and then recommend lactobacillus and it's also important for men as well for s the sperm microbiome so I'm, I'm sort of really pleased about that's amazing that, yeah no because absolutely. so many people I'm sure you've had multiple people ask you um, many many people ask you about implantation and how you can sort of prepare your body to um, you know receive the embryo um, yeah and, and so are those products available on your site at the moment? They are. And I can see there's a question here that Francis has asked. Can you take um, FEM? It must be the um, FEM seed during yeah. the two weeks. Wait. Yes, you can. The important thing about FEM seed is, if you can, is taking it up. To, so three weeks before and a week after. Okay. So you've got nothing to lose if you want to take it now, this lady that's on her two-week wait. Okay. But it is, you know, you take it for a period of months. Okay, brilliant. And for anyone who's joined and didn't know, um, Zeta has a code for our readers, which is FHH10 for a lovely 10% off products. So do take advantage of that. Um, so I have some more questions to ask. Yes. Exercise, always controversial, and people ask a lot about what they can and can't do, you know, um, maybe during cycles, um, after transfer. What do you normally advise when, when you've seen patients i i think it depends on the level ex of exercise you're used to doing so i honestly think when you're going through ivf those early times when you're stimulating um i i don't encourage exercise at oh, all oh sorry or fe someone's just asked, yeah someone's just asked the name fem sieve yes Not fem seed fem sieve no, although fem seed's a good name it is a good name <laughs> Sorry, I've just interrupted you. Please carry yes. on. Yes, so when you're going through IVF, I don't think you should do a lot of exercise because, you know, what you're trying to do is, you know, conserve your energy, grow um, your follicles, and I think exercise sometimes can take the blood away from the pelvic area. Okay. Um, however, having said that, it depends on the person in front of me. Some women use exercise to help manage their emotions or their tensions and their stress. So I do suggest cutting it down during IVF and especially in the in the whole of IVF and especially in the two-week wait you, know, mm -hmm. you don't want to be doing things I think you've just got to look after yourself and do a bit of self-nurture but it can be uncomfortable as well can't it after yes. collection yeah. and it, you, you know it can be a bit painful to walk and things like that yeah yeah absolutely depending on how many follicles or eggs yeah. have been collected. yeah absolutely um and in terms of men um yeah. and sperm quality Yes. What are the key nutrients that men should be looking for to maximise sperm quality? Well, a, a sperm needs exactly what um, an egg needs. Okay. The difference between men and women is that the egg is the largest cell in the body, but all of our cells need energy, and that's what's depleted in so many people today. Mm -hmm. So the way you build up your stores of energy are through sleep, through going out in nature, um, through meditation, breathing, you know, taking time to calm yourself um calm yourself down so an egg needs more because when you go through ivf it's not a natural thing to do you know when you're trying naturally you're producing one egg when you're going through ivf you want to get a lot of eggs so you need protein you need extra extra nutrients so, but for a man for sperm again he needs energy because he's producing millions of them mm -hmm. And it's, it's usually just one that will fertilize the egg through IVF or ICSI. So again, um, 
omega-3 for the head of the sperm. And when you think the most important role a man has is delivering that DNA into the egg. So you can't look at sperm and just say that one's good mm. through a microscope. It's looking at the integrity of the sperm. So sometimes it's doing tests such as sperm DNA fragmentation. Yes. And there's another test that we do now called Zymot, which uh, follows the sperm and watches that the stronger ones come get through, which is, you know, fascinating. Mm. So a man needs omega-3. He needs coenzyme Q10 to, for the energy for them to swim. Antioxidants, you know, as an egg does, protection from free radical damage. Vitamin D are on the receptors of the ovary and on the sperm, but also some extra antioxidants, vitamin C, NAC, alpha-linoleic alpha acid. All of these are important. Okay. And um, sperm cycle, is that about 90 days? Yeah, it's about 90 or 100 days. And, okay. you know, for, and, 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 and men's eve, because again... Yes the sperm environment and the right probiotic mix. So I think, you know, it is around 100 days to make sperm and for them to mature. But I think you've got to look at your lifestyle as well. So no drinking, no smoking, no hot baths, marathon running, all things like that mm -hmm. um, can have an impact. Mm, absolutely. And there is so much emphasis on women yeah. and um, fertility declining with age and yeah. diet and all of the above. But the same applies to men, doesn't it, in terms of sperm health deteriorating with age two? Yeah, it does. But men are more fortunate than um, men are more fortunate than women that they're producing sperm twenty four seven. Yes, you know, for a woman, the decline is you know her eggs are being reduced. Yep. But for a man, I mean, look at Mick Jagger, seventy three, mm -hmm. and you know it's sort of. But is there more coming out about you know? Um, like you said, with sperm DNA fragmentation, children born um, of fathers who are perhaps older, possibly having, um, you know, autism and other um, learning difficulties, for example. I, you know, the, the, the thing is, you've got to decide, are you going to have a baby or you're not going to have a baby? You know, it's sort of, you've got to do the best you can for your age. And of course, there's always more and more information coming out as we go along. And that's why I think... It's looking, looking at everything you can do to optimise the health Absolutely. of the egg yeah. and the health of the uh -huh. health of the sperm. And preparing for yeah, and yeah. listening to lives and, and experts like yourself talking to think, what can I do in my power to make us as healthy as we can be preconception to give yeah, us the best between couples sometimes because a woman will feel that she's doing everything. I mean, you know, she's gone out and bought the books and the vitamins yeah. before her husband's got out of bed in the morning. Well, you know, exactly. So, <laughs> um, so there's a lot that, um, you know, so it, it, it's important that um, you both are in this together. Absolutely. Somebody here, is there anything specific a man can do to increase sperm motility? The <laughs> difficult thing about sperm is some men will make all the changes and have very few things that come up differently on the sperm re-improvement right others you know you can do a lot and and you can see a big difference so you know looking at lots of fresh fruit lots of fresh veg ubiquinol omega-3 vitamin d exactly the same as an egg needs absolutely and in terms of um how often you should you should take supplementation um for the prenatals that at uh, your range, how often, yeah. how many supplements would that be a day for men and women? I think it depends on the individual. Can I just ask, answer this? Yes, lady? please. Yes, Come sorry. Up times. Does egg freezing cause an early menopause? Um, no, it doesn't. And, and this is what a lot of people worry about. But when you are being stimulated, you know, when, when you're going through a natural cycle, you're producing not just one egg, you're producing many eggs and one will become the dominant um, follicle, and the rest will go through a process called atresia, where they all die off. So when you're doing IVF, you're just recruiting all of the follicles on the ovaries. So it doesn't mean to say that you're going to have an early menopause just because you're producing more eggs. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, again, with doing something like egg freezing, you need a good collection of eggs to be able to freeze because not all will be viable some will be immature so you're looking at producing 18 to 20 eggs to potentially make a baby which is quite a lot 
And also to that point, given what we're talking about, egg health, sperm health, yes. would you advise if someone was looking at egg freezing, depending on their age and how much time yeah. that they have, to prepare in advance for that oh, yeah, to maximize the quality of the eggs being taken? Yes, I, I, you know, I do at least three months before. I think it's, it's, you know, it's well worth doing. So sorry, you were asking about um, supplements. I think what's important to look at is the person in front of you. You know, if they've got any underlying medical conditions that might be depleting them of key nutrients. So a lot of women are on steroids that goes through IVF that can deplete you of vitamin D, you know, prednisolone. We test all women and men for vitamin D. So we're able to um, give them extra. Um, you look at how long somebody's been trying, whether there's under any underlying medical condition, you look at their age. And, you know, if you're young, you don't need a lot of supplementation. A multivitamin and mineral containing folate, which is important. Vitamin D, which I think is key. And certainly I would look at now with a vaginal microbiome, uh, a probiotic. If you are older and your AMH is low, you've got to do everything that you mm -hmm. can. So you would end up taking more supplements. Um, when I was taking your supplements during fertility treatment and then um, the first cycle did not work and the second did, um, yeah. I then moved on to your um, pregnancy range. Yeah. So what, what are the differences sort of from the pre the, the fertility side into the early pregnancy and, and trimesters? Yeah, that's a good question. Because, you know, for, for so many women watching this, they know everything about fertility. They yeah. know nothing about being yeah. pregnant. So all we're trying to do in that preconception stage is build up your key nutrients, build up as you know, get get nutrition, nutritionally dense food and supplements into you because your baby, when you're pregnant, won't rely on anything you have in any one day. It relies on your stores. So that is absolutely key. So vital essence one is what you move on to when you get pregnant. Yes. And that's got that looks at what's going on in the first trimester, formation of all the baby's organs. So again, omega three, vitamin D, multivitamin and minerals, all absolutely help. And you know, as you go through the different stages of pregnancy, um, the, 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 each stage has a different amount of um, nutrients in. So, for example, by the time you get to 28 weeks of pregnancy. Um, the baby's brain is going through rapid development, so it needs a lot of omega omega three, which you need to accumulate as your pregnant get, pregnancy goes on. And very often, for those women that are going through IVF, they are they are so excited and ecstatic to get that pregnancy test, um, but it only lasts for five minutes. The excitement because and then the worries, again. especially if somebody's had a miscarriage mm -hmm. or a previous failed IVF. So, you know, it's important that you really look after yourself and wrap yourself in a bit of cotton wool and get as much support as you can during that time. Absolutely. It's not, it's not as though you sort of prepare your body for conception and then that moment happens and then you just yeah. undo all yeah. the hard work that you've been doing. Although I think a lot of women, women panic because when they're pregnant, they've been so what they call good beforehand yeah. <laughs> their diet and everything. And then, you know, once they're pregnant, they crave carbs and yeah, exactly. Exactly. chocolate and all the bad things. But that's what your body's asking for. Yeah. So as long as it's not cold or harmful, I'm sure you're okay. Uh, we've had a lot of questions, which is sort of more on the medical side. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions? Um, I'm just aware of Zita's time as well, which are related to improving egg, sperm, health, well-being, other things that you can be doing to optimize health whilst you're trying to conceive please do ask um anyone who's joining or just joined uh zeta is kindly giving our readers 10 percent off their entire range which is amazing um with the code fhh10 so uh if you head to zeta's website um you will be able to take advantage of that at checkout and they are also they've also written a fabulous article you've written a fabulous article sorry for us around this topic about how to improve sperm and eggs uh, which is in the link in our bio so everything we've talked about and more is on there so please head there and read um, and Zita is also giving away a free bundle to support egg health which is worth over 160 pounds lasting for the next uh, week or so so again head to our link in bio to to, to find out more now, someone just actually asked about improving ovulation levels and AMH levels. 
Okay. Uh, is there anything nutritionally or supplementation wise that can aid either of those? Yeah, I, I, definitely. So if somebody is worried about ovulating or their cycle is irregular or they've got PCOS, something like inositol is really good because it's been shown that it's just as effective as metformin. Um, so it helps regulate your cycle. It can help uh, maturing the eggs. And so for a lot of women in their 40s, I always have them on um, myo-inositol. I think that's important. Okay. Um, and what was the second part to your question? Um, it was AMH levels. Um, yeah. And yeah, you've said about ovulation. Yeah. A AMH. AMH is just one marker. It's always good to have an ultrasound as well to look at the antral follicle count. And with AMH, if you're younger, it's all based on numbers. So the higher the number, the better. Um, apart from it will be falsely high if you've got PCOS. Um, and again, you know, I think that your AMH, once your AMH is taken, it's important that you repeat it. But the important thing to remember with AMH is if it is low, it doesn't generally go right up. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it might go up a couple of points, but it, it doesn't double. So when it's low, it's low. So you need to do everything you can to help. Um, with the eggs that you've got, the quality of the eggs you've got. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time for me, it's about, you know, looking ahead, thinking about that you've done absolutely everything. You've ticked every box so that the worst case scenario that it doesn't happen for you, you, you can decide what you need to move on to do. Mm -hmm. But I don't think there's any harm in it at all. And some women actually take something called DHEA as well. Yeah. That is a prescription drug that um, doctors may um, suggest if your AMH is low. And do your um, standard prenatal vitamins have these in? What, what in? Um, uh, everything that you've just mentioned, so the- Oh yeah, they do, they, they, they do, but they're, you know, there are specific nutrients that are good in a higher dose. So okay. ubiquinol on its own, omega-3 on its own, there's a multivitamin, and mineral as well, but also the, the fem seeds. The most important thing is to try, and you're looking at the eggs you've got in store to try and improve them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and that's why I think it's, well, I know it's worth going to a trusted provider like Zeta, because you want to make sure that you're not sort of taking lots of different things from different places and not knowing how, how much you're taking, because I would presume that whilst taking not enough, taking too much of something can also have yeah. detrimental effects. Yeah, absolutely. And I see a lot of women that come in and they've Googled and they come with all these vitamins they've Googled that they're, they're taking. And again, you know, some of them, if they've got IBS, they're not absorbing properly. So it's important that the absorption is right. So it's important to take um, folate instead of folic acid. It's a more natural form and it's better absorbed. So if you've got some genetic issues around something called MTHFR, you're yeah. able to absorb folic acid, so folate is a better form. So you're always looking at the type of vitamin that is going to be easily absorbed. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you know, if you've got an inflammatory condition such as endometriosis, PCOS, any autoimmune disorders, again, you're looking at dampening down that inflammation. So there'd be different things you'd be eating or, or doing. So it has to relate to you. Another good question that's just come in is around um, toxins, so parabens. Yeah. Um, parabens. What, yeah. What's your advice around day-to-day -day products? Yeah, it's really, it, it's getting increasingly bad. You know, even things like with water, with um, plastics and everything like that, it's really, really hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because you have to live your life. I know. You have to go out for a walk. You have to live your life. So I think... Where what you have control over, um, you, you need to go with. So, you know, like your cleaning products, oven cleaners, wallpaper um, remover, you know, wood, all, all of those things. If you're moving house and you're doing DIY, just be really, really careful. That's all you can be. I mean, I sometimes see artists that come in and they're using chemicals and all sorts of things. Um, and you've got to mask up. You've got to, you've got to be careful. You've got to do the best you can. Mm. I was really nervous about using things like nail varnish and yeah. hairspray yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Even, yeah. even when I was pregnant as well. Yeah, I know. And, and I think the first 12 weeks 
are important. So if you can stay away from nail, you know, not having your nails done. Hair. Yeah. Hair, exactly. all of that. I think it's, I think it's important. Okay. That's really good to know. Um, what you touched on at the beginning, I think is key. Um, just, just to, if you have time now, um, talking about the sort of pace of life, um, obviously things have changed a bit with COVID, et cetera. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know about everyone else, but I have, like, I just don't feel that healthy following COVID um, or, or this era. I've, yeah. I've really struggled with losing weight I gained during COVID and it just felt like an uphill battle. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that people are on the go so much that it's really hard, especially if you're working and busy, whatever you're doing, to grab the right foods and drinks to eat yes, on the yeah. go and to keep your energy up, you know, snacking on biscuits or whatever it might be. And so what, what, I, what I would love to do, but don't find the time, is to prepare a lunch to take with me to the office, for example, yeah. so that I know what's going into it, um, rather than just grabbing something. And so I think everything you've just said about sort of trying to do what you can to prepare yeah. and eat as healthily as you can, but also making sure that you're getting enough sleep, doing a, a moderate exercise mm -hmm. and having premium supplements like yours is a really good mixture of laying those foundations. I think as well, I mean, it's a very worrying time for many women that are going through fertility or thinking about IVF with the cost of living going up, yes. food going up, all of that is really, really important. And, you know, I think you've got to do what makes you feel comfortable to do. So, you know, I don't want anybody breaking their bank buying vitamins if they haven't got the money to, to do it. You need to look and think, well, what can I really afford mm -hmm. and what do I need to be doing? But it all comes back as well, Eloise, to, to mindset. Yes. Know? And I think... You've got to build in, you know, you start, many women, they come to me, they start on a Monday morning, as they say, being good. And then by Thursday, they've slipped. If you slip, that's fine. You just start again. You just press the reset button and don't beat yourself up about it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and do these do supplements help with sort of hormone balances as well? Yeah, I think they do because, you know, again, you know, looking at fertility as a whole body event, if you're stressed, if you're anxious, what's going to be happening is that you get much more into a fight or flight mode. Yes. Your adrenal, um, your stress hormones goes up, cortisol and adrenal, which depletes the body of vitamin C, depletes it of zinc, etc. So, you know, they can help with hormone balance, but you've got to help yourself as well. Um, you don't have control over when you get pregnant, but you do have control over what you eat, supplementation, but also how you manage your life. Yeah, and you've given brilliant advice today. Thank you so much. No, it's such a pleasure. pleasure chatting with you and for answering everyone's questions. I'm really sorry for the people where we haven't had a chance to cover everything. Um, but any any questions, feel free to uh, send them my way. Um, and uh, yeah, for anyone who missed it or has just joined, Zita is uh, giving away a, a wonderful bundle, um, which is for supporting egg quality. So head to our link in, well, head to our website, fertilityhelphub.com to enter now. Um, and we've also linked up a fabulous article that Zita has written around this topic of tips for improving egg and sperm quality, which is just fantastic. Um, and if you'd like to use our code for FEMSEV, anything that we've just talked about today, head to Zeta's website and use FHH10. So yeah, um, I can say to this reader here, this listener here, it can be very lonely sometimes. I, know. I absolutely understand it can be very lonely sometimes. So it's important you get support that you, that you need from family, friends. There's networks out there that help as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, um, thank you once again. And okay, everyone pleasure. Have a okay. nice evening. Take care, Louise. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.